so you can see my stack of Nintendos I still haven't got to. Oh, you still haven't worked on those yet? They're clean. They're ready to mod. Oh, oh, you got them all apart. The motherboards are socketed and capped. Oh, that's good. So from this point, it's just a simple process of doing the install. Uh huh. And I'm down to my last, what, maybe 11 boards. Plus and, another three. Yeah, thankfully. And I got one ready to ship to another guy in the UK. So I think I'll have two UK modders. Yeah, one of these can make sure. Yeah, see, this one's got uh, J5 soldered, so I'll have to undo that. But I upgraded them all to 2.0s. Yeah, I'll probably be a 2.5 eventually. What are you finding? Um, well, just to fix the problem with those two games, Blaster Master and Blaster Bastard, and one of the Bart Simpson. Crap fests. Oh, I didn't know that they had a Bart Simpson issue. Yeah, um, not like anyone really want to play that, but yeah, Blaster Master actually works. It's just the title screen that's screwed up, but it actually you can play the game and it's actually fine. It seems. I don't know if there's cutscenes or not. I haven't played it that far. I do have the PAL motherboard on its way from okay Switzerland. I think was where the boys are from. Then you say it worked on NTSC and with NTSC chips and they put PAL chips in and it didn't, is that what he said? No, I think it's a complete PAL console. Yeah, I know, but I thought he said he put NTSC chips in and it worked. Um, I think he just moved it to an NTSC console. Oh, and then it worked? Yeah, okay. I think. Which I think most most of the European market would rather play in 60 hertz. Well, I mean, if you're going to have HDMI, you might as well. I mean, especially if you're going to get a power pack or never drive. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things I was going to talk about in the high definess update video was why it hasn't come out yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of did and it didn't. <laughs> right. Well, their first for, for first hundred were what we said they were going to be for us to install and figure out if there's any problems. Uh huh. And we found some. Yeah. And that's what you've been doing. I mean, you spent how many months on Rev two? Yeah. Firmware. Yeah, I spent that a lot of forever. time on that because that really sucked. And probably what last two, maybe three months on some hardware problems. Yeah, I've been doing other things too. You know, I don't just do right. high def NES all day every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I got sick for like a couple weeks. Yeah, we were supposed to do this video a month ago. Yeah. And it just didn't happen. Um. My last high definition update video was December, mid December, December 16th, and yours was like October 23rd. Yeah. So I'm sure everybody's chomping at the bit. I mean, hell, my my last video got, it's almost at 6,500 views. I mean, people are just dying for any more information they uh -huh. can get from us. <laughs> so well, unfortunately, there really isn't a lot more information to give. I mean, it's going to go, I had to fix the composite video. That's just been the biggest pain in the ass ever. You know, you have you modify your NES for HDMI. I mean, I never thought people would really want the composite video. Did you? No. You know, I mean, it's like, well, HDMI. you're gonna mod this damn thing. Why do you want composite video? You know? Yeah. But it's it's fixed now, or you're still working on it, or? Well, that's the thing. Um, been having lots of problems with it, so um, it seems to be PPU related. You know, some PPUs they work, some don't. It's just. That video pin is really high impedance and it's very sensitive to any kind of noise and that really screws it all up. Mm. That's the problem. It screws up the composite video output? No, it screws up the HDMI. Oh. That's what causes it to roll occasionally. Yeah, I've had a few of those. And sometimes roll just left and right continuously. That's what causes that. Oh. If I Interesting. Was, it's that transistor. So I, the fix is I moved the transistor to the interposer itself to get it as close as possible to that video pin. So you haven't changed the composite circuit, you just I moved just it closer moved to it. the Yeah, it's just the transistor, it's not the whole composite circuit because it won't fit. Okay. So basically on your, here's that NES board. Yeah. So the, the change is you take out uh, this transistor here and jump the base to, um, base to emitter junction with a wire. If you want composite. Yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to. Do you have to pull it though? Um, the transistor? Yeah. No, but it won't work very well if you don't. Okay. It, the composite won't. 
But the HDMI will be fine. Yes. Okay. That's fine. So on these, you would probably have to pull it because it has a modulator. You know, someone tries to use that modulator, it's not going to work. Right. I'm not sure I'm concerned about that. Just as long as the HDMI is fine. But if there is a way to fix it, great. Yeah, but that's been the biggest bugaboo has been that composite transistor, believe it or not. That's what's been causing all this trouble. Hmm. One stupid little transistor and for of the course, composite video. The analog NT probably doesn't have the same circuit. Yes, it does. It, it has exact the same, same. has a problem. That's why I had to uh, fix that. So. Well, originally I was concerned that a lot of the problems that I've been having that NT wasn't having was uh -huh. because all the ones that I do, I actually use the high def NES to power the whole console, uh -huh. and they don't. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be the issue. I thought it may have been, but it doesn't appear to be. But now we know, uh -huh. at least. Yeah, I have not seen that power supply fail once yet. On, on the couple I got back, this power supply actually was fine. Okay. So, two of them, the 3.3 regulator wasn't working right. It's outputting less, and I don't know why. So I was going to try and pull that little chip and replace it on two of them. And then one of them has an HDMI problem itself. I think the connector pins may be shorted or something, mm. or open. And But... Yeah, I haven't really had any major power problems other than those two with the 3.3 it was a little low. Well, and I was just going with that theory because uh -huh. that was the only difference. Yeah, yeah. And Analog NT had like zero problems, and I had, what, maybe 10? I don't 10 think main it, boards? No, you only gave me back about seven. Seven? Yeah. But it was still concerning, and there was just as many interposers too, but yeah. it was concerning because I thought, well, you know, what's different? And that the was thing the big, is, that all, was the those, thing. all those boards worked fine when I gave them to you, you know, and I programmed them, so I don't know what happened. Which, that's another thing that you've uh, upgraded as far as assembly, is you also wrote some new code. Yeah, I have a test thing, so when at the factory, when they make the boards, they can actually test the boards there and fully debug them. Which, you had them testing just... Uh, well, they couldn't test anything before, because oh, they it, didn't. the test code was broke. Oh, that's right. The test code was for the prototype version, and some of the pins moved. And then the test code wouldn't run on these boards. Okay. That was the problem. So for the test code, you put a, uh, a ribbon cable between the two connectors, and then hook the hook 9 or 12 volts up here, and plug it in HDMI, and it will totally uh, test everything. Which is not only pins of the... Uh, Connector FPGA. pins, FPGA pins, HDMI, and then the audio. So basically everything. Which also would test power? Well, yeah, because yeah. you're powering it. Yeah. So yeah, it tests everything, so then I'll know I then I know I'll get known good boards out of them. That's excellent. So yeah, that'll make life a lot easier. <laughs> How close are we now? Well, I pretty much just have to send it off, but uh, the only thing I've been Working, um, worrying about has been that stupid composite circuit. Uh, everything else, I'm really not really worried about. Are you wanting to do another short run of prototypes? No, to test I don't it, think I need pretty to. sure. Pretty sure. In the worst possible case, I have to get new interposers made, but I don't think that'll be happening. I didn't really change much, so. And you didn't change anything on the. I didn't change boards. anything on the. Yeah, I did. I um. I re I moved oh, this. Oh right, just the physical stuff. Removed this hole. Yeah. And I got rid of um this little half hole. And then I got rid of this, but I'm gonna put this back in. I've seen people use that actually. Yeah, you know why I need that? <laughs> no. I didn't think about it when oh, I programmed your test it. Gig. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, shit. How am I gonna program the damn thing if I can't fit it in the jig, right? <laughs> So yeah, I got to put that back on. Oh, and of course, the HDMI connector is moved out. Right? Yeah, this move the connector moved out very slightly. I moved it about a millimeter, basically as far as I could move it without making a protrusion on the board. Okay. But I measured this; should be plenty. It should be exactly flush, just about with the plastic back here. With the now. inside of it. Yeah, it should be. It should stick out, you know, like about like that now. Okay. That should be plenty. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be one millimeter and I mean that's a lot of space on that connector so I so wonder if I've got a bottom half somewhere around here that meet, that matches that one I'm not even sure anymore been a long time since I messed with the top loaders or you know I thought all those front loaders um, were modded already no <laughs> and then I saw the big pile of circuit boards 
No, that's why you haven't got paid yet. <laughs> what about all of those up there? These? Yeah. Top loaders? I haven't done anything with those. Oh, did you just get those in? No. <laughs> well, how long? I've just been have? stashing them. Oh, okay. But I'm not putting these in them because they don't fit. Yeah, yeah. And people were complaining oh, about see. that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all those and all the ones that are in there. Oh yeah, I see those. There's now. a couple up there. I counted uh, there's something like 55 or 60 of them. Top loaders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a lot of top I've got loaders. two pow top loaders. Okay. Which. Shit, you should have let me know that you had pal top loaders. I would have tested on them. I thought I did back in the day, but I don't remember. I think the pal chips that I got you are out of one of them. Oh, are they? Yeah. Because one of them, one side of those pal chips works, and there was like one bad one. Remember, it had an X on it. A pal chip? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know where I would have got that from. Wasn't a UMC chip, was it? No. Those but, work. Yeah, I think there was four pal chips on that foam you gave me and two of them work three of the chips work and one doesn't i think speaking of love. the umc chips yeah i actually found Did you find those like some 6528s and some 6527ps and the p don't work as a cpu and at the, all and the ppu yeah but not through uh regular composite it yeah. works fine with high definition board oh it does yeah but you put on regular composite, no good. And then I had a, a Famicom clone. I mean, uh -huh. it looks like an original red and white one. And this was the CPU in it. <laughs> it just says 2011 on it. Yeah, that's and a... That thing works perfect. What is this, a CPU? Yeah. Yeah, that's obviously a clone. Right. <coughs> but I don't... I think they had other UMC chips on there, and that was just... Um, you could buy that pair. Mm -hmm. So I bought that pair, and I didn't know one of them was a P. Where did you get it? eBay? No, it was uh, it, it was either AliExpress or oh okay. Nevada. Pretty sure it was AliExpress because I still get emails from him, of course. Twenty eleven. That's funny. I wonder who made that. UMC didn't make it. I don't think. And sometimes you can tell who made a chip by if you look at the package, but the dot's different. This mm -hmm. is a little rounded one. This one's kind of flat. Yeah, that's still a video, a video you need to make. Ejector <laughs> pins are different. <coughs> this is BG11 and this is 2011. I went back and tried to find more UMC chips and I didn't have any luck. No, I don't remember what the hell I looked for. It must have been hmm. UMC specific. There's a post on the Nesdev forum that, that goes through all of these chips. Well, that's yeah. why I went by. Oh, okay. And you have I don't know that it made mention of, of the 27P. You have the system this came out of still? Yeah. Let's see it. Put these under the camera so people can... Yeah, the whole system was already socketed. Well, and the other chip is a UA6528. Oh, you know what? I think Joe had one very, very, very similar to this. I remember this part. That is funny. <laughs> oh, that's the family game. Mm -hmm. Is that a family label? computer? Yeah, the label's not even on there straight. Or it moved. It's like a clear thing that's square, and this is like not that's underneath that. Isn't that weird? It's the same over there. It's part of the mold, even. Oh, that, oh, you're right. It's part of the mold, and then they just um, didn't put the stickers on straight. <laughs> ah, fuck it. We don't need straight stickers. We're making family games. It's Chinese clothes. Clone, screw it. Uh, that's hilarious. It's like an exact clone, just about. Almost. Hmm. It was hidden away somewhere. I even forgot I had it. Oh, that's interesting. But yeah, that looks very similar. And so this had the 2011 in it. Mm-hmm. And as far as I know, the 
6528 is the same. Uh huh. Like if I took that one out and put it into a top loader, I would get black and white composite video. Okay. So this is um, not PAL, but it's. Like maybe Brazil PAL. Yeah. NTSC M or whatever that or is. PAL M. Isn't it PAL M? PAL M, yeah, I think you're right. I don't know. Right. Whatever fucked up video mode that it's like is. 50 hertz NTSC or something. Yeah. Mm hmm. No, it's uh, 60 hertz PAL, I thought. Yeah, yeah. With the PAL burst clock. Okay, let's. Mm, this one, this package doesn't really line up either. Hmm. Could be a clone of a UMC chip. <laughs> a clone <laughs> of a clone. <laughs> flat blade at. What do you need? I want to pop this out and look at the bottom. Ah. Oh, use the use the tool for it, right? <laughs> I use it on occasion. Sometimes it's easier to use a flat blade screwdriver. Hmm. Two. No nonsense. Oh, well, that's interesting. I think it was 14th week of 91. Where you have a magnifying glass doodad. Okay, that looks familiar. Well, why this... Why this is interesting. The bottom is laser marked and the top is printed. Huh. What the hell? Why would they do that? Yeah, this laser marked. I have no idea why they would laser mark the bottom and then print the top. Hmm. Interesting. You need to make that video sometime about identifying clone chips. Oh, was yeah? it, wasn't the was it the SPO two fifty six that we first talked about? Yeah, that? there's lots and lots of clones of that. Mm-hmm. <coughs> there's clone <coughs> Clone CPUs and PPUs on eBay too. If you search for RP2A03, you'll find them. Hmm, I wonder if they work. Um, I think someone bought them in their um, their PAL versions. Ugh. So and I think they're UMC chips too. So I thought about buying some just for the fun of it. Yeah. Just to see. See if it worked with the high def. Yeah. They can take those three if you want oh, okay. to. Okay. You know, give them a I didn't have much luck with them. Shot and see what happens. I, did, I sure as hell didn't find, have any luck finding more 2011s, whatever that means. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's no way no. you can find that. You know, one of those pirate fabs or whatever. You know, hell, it could be UMC. UMC made a lot of chips just like that. If you open a lot of pirate carts, they'll, they'll have like a part number like that on them. Like I've seen MMC3 clones that just say 88. It looks just like that, only it just says 88. Hmm. Nothing else. Gotta wonder about that. I know UMC made lots and lots of pirate stuff and uh, they tried to make their own video game system too. Really? Super A-Can, have you heard of it? I think we talked about that one time. One of the things I was hoping we'd have was the templates. Oh, yeah? Um, this is just shit that I cut out and made my own from freaking poster board. Uh-huh. But Voltar is working on ones that's metal that we'll be able to reuse for modders. Oh, that's and cool. And we'll also have ones like this, just one-time use. Uh-huh. Well, you know, it may be good making a sticker. You know what I mean? We made it to where they sit, like in the in the recess, uh -huh. pretty tightly. Well, see and if you're you just making one mark on there. Yeah. Well, see if you have it. If you made that a sticker, they would have to cut out, cut it out. Then you stick it on, and then you can drill or cut or whatever you have to do. Well, that's another thing that somebody else is working on is new stickers right here. Oh yeah. 
Oh, that's funny. Because you have to that hole like, cuts right into mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else says, and you know, in all of my videos, I've made a little notch right there where the hole is. Uh -huh. Put the sticker back on there. And they're like, why don't you just cut it all the way across? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> And I did it like the last few times I've done it. I just cut it all the way across instead of trying to make a notch on the fucking sticker. Because you, mean, you got enough, you got just enough between the hole and the top of that recess right there. If you cut it just below the lettering, oh I see the what you're saying. On oh I see. Uh -huh. So there's no notch. It's just a cut. Oh that across. makes sense. Yeah. I'm like duh. <laughs> Plus, these things will basically come apart. Like you can rub that surface print off uh -huh. of that really easy oh, uh -huh. when you're cleaning it. Yeah, yeah. I've ruined uh -huh. a bunch of these just from taking my scratch pad across the other. So if somebody comes up with those two, I would definitely offer yeah, that's those. That's pretty cool. Somebody was uh, also trying to come up with a logo for us just for the high definness. Oh yeah. And I'm like, that's a great idea. Yeah. And I thought, well, why just one person? Hell let everybody send us a, a possible logo for it. Come up with a winner and give him a free kit. Fuck it. I wonder if you you, you you take these out, right? Take them out? Yeah. Leave them out? Yeah. No, I put them back in. Oh, you put them back in? Shit, I just give them to the scrap man and get the lot of money for them. Um, I just took 440 pounds of steel last week. I got $12. It was a bunch of shit I had in my garage, and I just, it was in the way. Uh -huh. So I didn't care what I got for it. I knew I wasn't going to get much because I'm friends with the person that runs the place, and they were like, just just hang on to it. You know, it's it's way down. I'm like, uh -huh. I don't want to hang on to it. I want it out of here. <laughs> Twelve freaking dollars. I'm not even sure that paid the gas to haul the shit over Yeah, there. that's not worth it at all. I mean, even you have tons and tons of it, that's not... Hell, that was almost a quarter ton right there. So was it 50 bucks a ton? If that, yeah. I don't think I don't think the other metals are as down. Uh -huh. I mean, they're down a little bit, but not like not like steel and iron is. Yeah, it's probably good. a little over fifty bucks if you got that much, because you know you said four hundred and how many? Four hundred forty pounds. Four hundred forty. Yeah. They're probably fifty-three or fifty-four a ton. So this is all of our referral modders, <laughs> the people that I handpicked. Uh huh. Uh, we got Voltar in Kentucky. Okay. Uh, we got Leon K in Canada. Um, consoles for you in Switzerland. I think these are the guys that are sending us the the PAL okay. motherboard. Um, Mr. Norton in Germany. I can't remember if he had an actual um, store name or anything. Dave Cornish in uh, Swindon, UK. Mike Smith in Bellevue, Washington. I want to say a lot of these guys had store names, and I'm just not getting it. Uh -huh. Mike Moffat in New York. Yeah. You know who that is? Yeah. Oh, I thought him at IRC. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Smith in Emirado, North Dakota, which is like straight north of Fargo. Uh, Mr. Capella in Poland. Can't pronounce his first name. And Kevin Mitchell in Portland, Oregon area can't say that town and then there's a number 11 another one another guy in the UK and a guy uh, well a store from Japan contacted me wanted to do a wholesale resale of the kit and I said we're not looking for that yet yeah I said but if you know of a modder let us know uh -huh. and he was like well can we sell modded consoles I mean you sell all you want you know you can buy kits have him mod them and sell them in your store all you want that, uh -huh. that's kind of the point so hopefully They'll find a Japanese modder for me. I had another guy contact me who thought he might want to be one, but turns out he just couldn't handle the volume and uh -huh. didn't have like, you know, I'm looking for somebody that, I wish I would have said this in the, in the very first video I talked about call for modders, but I want people that can do five or more consoles a week. Uh huh. And I want people that have, you, you know, an online presence. I want a YouTube channel and I want, you know, um, for them to post on forums or have their own website. Yeah. You know, to help spread the word or yeah. whatever. Otherwise, and, no one's going to know about it. Right. And then, I was, you know, I was like, well, how many NSRGB installs have you done? Because that's exactly what this is. is uh -huh. Desoldering CPU and PPU is the big part. If you don't have the right tool, you know, or tools for, for desoldering, I don't really want to refer people to you. Mm -hmm. You can do them. I'm not trying to stop anybody from doing them. 
I'm just this is the people I'm going to put on my website. Say, if you're looking for somebody close to you, th these are people I'm pretty sure are going to treat you right. Uh huh. So, and I didn't say none of that in the other video. So I've got a lot of people emailing me <laughs> saying, "Hey, I want to be a modder." I'm like, "Well, tell me why." You uh -huh. know, and then it, I'd say about half of them weren't didn't want Serious. couldn't couldn't Serious. handle the qual quantity or just whatever reason, you know. But still ended up with. You know, eleven guys so far. But well, I think that's probably good enough now. Oh, well, I mean, we're gonna have two hundred kits the first round. Yeah. And I've already been telling everybody one kit per person, and I've even told the modders that and they're like, "Why?" You know, because like, well, we only got two hundred, and I want to be fair. You know, I want to tell everybody way in advance when they're going on sale. You know, and I have it to where you can only buy one at a time, just so more people can get it. You know, I don't mm -hmm. want I want one person buying fifty kits and you know doing Sitting what I'm doing. Them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Modern consoles and selling them for. Exorbitant amount of money. <laughs> uh, Leon, I think it was yeah. Leon K just sold his, and he let it go for bids, and it went to four fifty. Wow! But I don't know if it was a Canadian buyer. Oh, and uh, that would make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Because with shipping and Canadian, everything. That Canadian dollars not really. Or is that U.S. dollars? No, it's Canadian for him. Four hundred fifty Canadian. No, it was four fifty U.S. Oh, okay, that's why I was wondering because mm -hmm. you know Canadian dollars them a lot. It would have been like five US. plus yeah. Canadian dollars, mm -hmm. but if they didn't have to pay shipping up there, it might have made a difference for them. Oh, yeah. Plus, it was the only one on eBay at the time. Uh huh. I hadn't sold any in a while. I just sold one this morning, actually. But you haven't want to buy it now or whatever? On my website. Oh, I didn't to say. Just to avoid eBay fees. Oh, uh huh. I feel like that stack yeah. and this stack are real nice ones, and then this ones are not so nice. <laughs> So I sell them cheaper. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, like yellowed or whatever, mm -hmm. a little bit. Got chips on the corners and shit like that. So, you know, some people don't care, but they just, if I can pay a little less, and yeah. yeah, that's fine. Get the same thing for less, why not? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, documentation. Um, one of the things I've not ever put anywhere is do we know exactly what revs of CPU and PPU work and don't work? Um, yeah, E, e rev and up are what you want. Is there an F? No. So it's E, G, H? As far as I know. And you're sure that um, the non-rev, what was there, a B? Well, non-rev CPU goes with a A, B, C, or D rev PPU. And you're sure that doesn't, that none of those combinations work? Well, I I wouldn't use them. But we're only going to find those in original Famicoms. In old original Famicoms. Right. And we're not really saying that it's even going to be possible to install that into an original yeah, Famicom Yeah, you, anyway. you can't put it in an original Famicom unless, unless, you you get, want to unless you get rid of the eject mechanism. Yeah, or want to hack it up some way. Right. But if you want it in a Famicom, I suggest a, a AB Famicom. And I don't know why the big fascination with the original Famicom the only thing on there is the microphone that you can't get on the AV Famicom. Yeah, but you can mod it for the microphone. Right, but I'm just saying, you know, not everybody knows that for one. Oh, yeah. But I get people ask me if I can do it in an original Famicom. I'm like, why would you want to? You know, I just don't get it. It's got the controllers that are this long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, actually, the AV Famicom dog bone is that same length, too. Is it? It's only this long. It's only like three feet. Really? Or two feet. I've got a bunch of them up here. Yeah, they're short as hell. <laughs> So they're just like a, a U.S. style dog bone, but they just shorten the cord. There's a you got Famicom. Oh, the Famicom lettering on the back. There, uh huh. But it's the it's but it's the it's exactly the it's same a, otherwise. Yeah, other than a shorter cord. <laughs> Three feet. Yeah. I still think I think that's longer than a. Regular Famicom, well, <laughs> almost. I bet it is. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, that's not really an original, but it no. looks like about the same. Well, maybe it's about the same. Yeah, this is probably three feet. Yeah. Well, it's kind of galling that there's like over almost a foot of cable inside the system too. Go to front to back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they're gonna have they were gonna have connectors on the front, and at the very last minute they're like, oh no, we're just gonna take them out the back because connectors are expensive. That's what I read anyway. That's why there's no power LED either, because it was expensive. 
not expensive, but you know when you're making that many. I just noticed that one doesn't have the expansion connector on it. What, this one? Yeah. It's right there. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking the AV fan will come out the side. But yeah, that one comes out the front. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the controller connectors were going to come out the front too, because they're on the front. Right. And then they're, at the last minute, pretty much, they said, oh, well, we're just going to run them out the back. That way we don't need a connector. Apparently. I'm sure it was not really at the last minute because there's they've designed in like these things these little ribs but mm -hmm. it was fairly far along in the design i think that's what i read anyway i don't know how true that is what's interesting on this pirate run they managed to find that proper reset switch because didn't you say those are pretty much unobtainium on the famicom i have no idea but mm. Oh, is it the top, the top loader? loader one is, I have had a few of those where the reset button's been bad. This mm -hmm. one, well, not bad, but corroded. Oh, the metals in, on the inside is corroded to where it wasn't making contact. Well, I would call that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not they're not physically broken. Yeah, but they're they just, electrically they, they don't work. Yeah, electrically they failed. Yeah. Well, same with the power switch. Yeah. Well, that's corrosion gets down inside in, there well in the legs oh yeah corrode completely off oh really mm -hmm. from that stupid capacitor no or just like water yeah just whatever in. gets spilled onto it now oh. you know, it's like the only Oops, I pulled my soda pop in there mm -hmm. well you can see this one had a line of crap like water that could have been from me cleaning it all oh, right that purple cleaner I use it leaves it like a white residue like that usually I Spray it down with the um, rubbing alcohol after I oh. rinse them off. Usually gets most of it. You may want if you're gonna wash stuff like this down, you may want to get some kind of oven or use your oven and put it on like you know 150 degrees. I put it in a fine space heater. Oh, well, that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I learned that the hard way because it usually. The water, water will get, get in inside. In oh, yeah, you don't want to get that wet. Right, it'll get in there and it'll, it will not come out unless you are uh -huh. superheating that yeah. thing. Yeah, you don't want to get water in there, it'll detune it. Who gives a shit? It's RF. <laughs> well, usually I was modding these anyway. And oh, if you're taking them out, who that cares? That was coming out, yeah. usually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you're taking it out, it doesn't matter. But if you still want to use it, you probably don't want to get water in there because it'll detune no it. Why anybody would still use RF? I don't know. Oh, I gotta have my composite on my HDMI <laughs> NES. Oh, well, yeah, that's another thing on the top floor. We only have composite output, it'll just be the RF, so yeah. even less reason to bother with taking the transistor out and doing all that extra mod work. All I have to do is just, yeah, well, I'm, they're all I have to do is take this out and jump it, and it should work like normal. You should. Yeah, you don't have to do anything other than take this out and jump it, and the RF will still work. Just, uh,. And the pins might actually be long enough. No, you can't just, short across it. Yeah, I can. Just wheel that back and forth until oh, it breaks break. off. And then actually, I would, I would save those transistors. You can sell those on eBay. People want that exact transistor no to do mods why. for some reason. I'm sure, Well, I'm sure they're using those as a composite mod. They are, but they want that transistor. Well, I've heard that argument before. They're like, oh, well, Nintendo must have used the best ones and <laughs> done the best circuit and then immediately after that somebody actually knows what they're talking about says are you stupid <laughs> i would probably save them myself if i was doing it oh I, I would have a thousand of those if i was saving all of them but i had no reason to i think the q2 is the exact same one too that's the oscillator no it's not no it's a npn that's a pnp that's a a and this is what a c yep a and B are P and P, C and D are N P N. By the way, if you ever see a transistor marked that way, that's how you know what what type it is. Hmm. That two S A B C mm -hmm. and D and K and J are FETs, but you won't see those very often. Will you see it on the really really small S and D ones? Uh, no. You gotta mark. You gotta um, measure those usually. Oh yeah. Or just no. Mm-hmm. But see, I could tell you what these transistors were, even if they had no markings, by going by how they're hooked up. Mm-hmm. Because you're Superman? No. <laughs> it's just, it's usually 
pretty easy to tell. Just look where the emitter connects. If the emitter is connected to ground, it's probably an NPN. If it's connected to power, it's PNP. That's how you tell. And if it's in common uh, emitter mode, then it's the collector is connected to power, it's an NPN. If it's connected to ground, like on here, it's a PNP. That's how you tell. That's it. It's not that hard. Maybe not somebody that's uh, been doing it forever and knows all stuff. Stuff is still beyond me. It's not that hard. I'd be designing more stuff, poking on things and see how they work. But yeah, one of the concerns was is maybe my ESD projection was causing some of the problems I was having. But I don't think so. Well, I think it's okay. And even if it was, we got major problems because I'm thinking of all these DIY people. They're not even going to have this. Yeah. Oh, well, you got it. If you don't use uh, ESD protection, you know, you don't have any warranty. <laughs> and you know, how do you prove or disprove? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Unless you get it back and one of the chips is blown up or something. All right. Well, yeah, one of the last things I got going is the damn, my website. Oh, yeah. Um, still not happy with the checkout system or the uh -huh. cart system. It relies heavily on PayPal to charge shipping. Okay. What, so, have it auto-calculate or something? It, well, it doesn't. PayPal doesn't. Yeah. All my website does is send PayPal the weight of the package. Okay. And, and you have to type in your zip code or country on PayPal. And so if they type in the wrong one. Well, yeah, I've only got it set up right now on the NES that I sell just for U.S. and Canada. Uh-huh. And you only got five ranges of weight that you can even put how much you charge for shipping. Oh, I see. So, like, the difference between shipping my TG16 region mod PCBs, which weigh nothing, and a Nintendo is such a large difference, it was just, it's a nightmare. Yeah, that sucks. And you have to do it for every country every single country and if they put in a country that isn't inputted it says zero shipping i had a guy from japan buy one. Oh, this is great and it was no shipping and he uh, just paid 375 or whatever it was i'm like what's going on here and i finally figured it out that sucks but he was he was nice about it he paid the shipping afterwards oh, mm -hmm. so it all worked out I wonder what the flux is on this. It's a 282. I wonder what that is. Rosin core. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. They're yeah, rosin sort. Oh, is it? I looked it up on Kester's site just because oh. that was one of the fiascos we had was I was using organic core, which I didn't know is the water soluble shit. Crap. Yeah. I wasn't really, cleaning it off. Yeah. It was on the interposers. It wasn't mm -hmm. on the main board. Well, it was, but it was just on the power connectors. It didn't really matter, but. I yeah, think I've want... got one coming back now that was messing up, and he sent me pictures, uh -huh. and it was one of the interposer boards that I put together with the organic core and not cleaned off. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's um, one or two of them sitting right there that don't work. Uh huh. And they were put together with the organic core and then cleaned off later and still didn't work, but it could have already affected it. I think when I get um, the next run made, I'm not gonna ha I'm gonna have them make them red. I think so we can see. Mm. This black sucks. You can't see anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It looks cool, but... <laughs> it looks cool, but it's hard to debug. Green's mm. okay, too, but... Mm. The main board is... One of them is one of my bricks during update. Oh, okay. And then the other one... I can't remember what was wrong with it. Pull oh, PPU yeah. ribbon to boot. Oh, this may have a 3.3 volt regulator problem then. Is that, is that what you narrowed it down to? Yeah, where um, the symptom is when you turn it on, it doesn't work. And if you turn it off and back on, then sometimes it'll start. Or if you unplug the cable and then plug it in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I may change that chip. Well, that was Something one of the else. other issues we thought maybe the assembler wasn't using parts that were very good. Could yeah, have been one of the problems. That I changed um, the inductor and the caps with ones off of my original prototypes, and it, and it still didn't change anything. So that kind of puts the kibosh on that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. There should be enough. You know, there should be enough power to um, boot that FPGA though. So this is what I narrowed it down to. I had one of them where the power supply was doing that. If the HDMI is not plugged in and you turn it on, it won't turn on. Okay or on and off, it doesn't matter, it won't turn on. Plug the HDMI in, you turn it on and off, it won't work, you turn it on, then it'll work. Hmm. But if the HDMI is not plugged in, it won't turn on at all. Weird. 
Well, the or H- if you pull the PPU ribbon cable. Yeah, then it would work. It's like the load's too much for it, but that's kind of strange. You know, that may point to another problem. Maybe I have a bus conflict on the 3.3 volts um, level translator or something like when the power's coming up and the amount of um, loading is too much for this chip. I don't know. That I didn't know about pulling the PPU thing, so I'll look at that. And it didn't seem to matter if you pulled the CPU one though. Uh huh. It would it would it would act exactly the same. Yeah, that's and that's the one I also tried swapping them. Uh huh. And it went with the PPU ribbon cable. Okay. Yeah, well, I think that may be a that may be a um, bus conflict on startup. Hmm. A resistor will fix it. So. Would it hurt to add it anyway? <laughs> no. <laughs> so. Actually, I think it's on. Is it on there? I'll look. No, it's not on there. Um, I'll figure that out. Yeah, this is what we've been dealing with, so that's why it's been delayed. Yeah, it's not very easy making a product like this. You know, it's so complicated. And all by yourself, too. Yeah, I mean, imagine how many hobbyist projects that are sold for the NES are this complicated. I don't think there's any. <laughs> uh, power pack, maybe? Yeah. That could be the most comparable one, you know. Yeah, but the power pack doesn't have, you know, 150 megahertz clocks on it like this does. You know, this is all high speed logic and multi voltage IOs and stuff. I mean, it's pretty complicated. I mean, well, it doesn't even, look like much. Even but Buddy Boy's AVS doesn't have full 1080p, so. No, it's only 720. That reduces a little bit, right? That's half the clock right mm -hmm. there. You can put those interposers in there, too. Yeah. Uh, I had a weird problem with it, not wanting to pull up the menu. Uh huh. Um, well, that means that um, one of the address lines probably isn't working, so DPCM probably would sound all broken too. I don't know if I took it that far. I had one doing that, and I changed up the CPU interposer, thinking that would be uh -huh. where it would be located. It didn't. Really it, it uses both to get those signals. Well, and then I changed out the main board and it worked, and oh, then okay. I reused both of those on a different console and it was, was fine. fine. Maybe you had a pin that wasn't, you know, making contact. Maybe there was an open on the board or something. Could be. Oh, you know, maybe that, that may have bricked and was that one that um, bricked after an update? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that one happened a while back. Two months ago oh, or okay. more, yeah. Yeah, I've never actually had that happen. I've never heard of anyone bricking one to well, an update. I I mean, I it's possible, but I'm not positive that it, it like my oh, connection man. was kind of uh, crusty. Well, that that made that all I did was bump them. I don't know if it was the HDMI. oh, was it the middle of updating? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, that's that's why. Yeah, you bricked it. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I no, knew, that, I knew as soon as it happened. Yeah. Like, Fuck. <laughs> yes, that will brick it. So yeah, it's easy. I can fix that. That's not yeah, problem. I knew you could just I reprogram just, it. I was just pissed because uh -huh. it was all the way together. <laughs> That's what pissed me off. Oh, okay. It was, it was completely together, and I just bumped the cord during the update, and it just went black screen. I'm like, oh my god! I, I, just, I knew what it was immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no way to prevent bricking unless you just don't update, which isn't an option, obviously. Well, I mean, hopefully at this point, nobody's going to get anything less than a 2.0. So yeah, at this point, yeah. Well, that's the other reason I only want to do a hundred. You know, we got that we had 1.0 out there, and you know, we had to fix the firmware. You know, I had to, some major problems for some people. So, and I got a lot of flack for why didn't you test every game? I'm like, what? yeah, how do you test every game I mean, on this? I mean, how many games are there? And it's like, oh well, I got the Sachin game, and it's not working right. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You know, or it's like, oh, I got this pirate multi-cart. Well, there's no way to test every game. It's impossible. Yeah. Especially when new games or cartridges are being made all the time, and all these homebrews are getting made, too. There's no way to test every game. No, the thing, the problem, main problems you run into is a cartridge works on a clone system, and it won't work on an original system. I've seen that. That's happened. Well, we've had ROMs that worked fine on the Power Pack, but not an original cart. Yeah. Like Blaster Master. Yeah. It always worked fine, didn't it? I don't know. I never tested it. On the Power Pack? Yeah. I thought you said you once you had heard about it, you tested it. 
and it was fine. Maybe. I think I tested it and it was fine. I, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll check it again. I thought it was broken on the power pack. I have an original card of it now. I don't have a setup right now. Yeah, it's okay. I've been working on some other stuff, so I haven't really worked on this a whole lot lately. But I've been sick, so I just didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, I wanted to make some more videos, and I haven't been able to do that. Well, I can now, but... What's your next set of videos going to be? More... I'm into doing more display things. But, see, I'm working on a, a new FPGA synthesizer. That's going to be my new project. That's of video game stuff. I'm sick of video game stuff. <laughs> I'll get back to it, but actually this is good because this is going to test out everything I need for my Zimba 3000. Oh. This is going to test, you know, I'm working on a video processor right now to render graphics. Kind of like it'll have... It'd be kind of like a Super Nintendo, only better. I'll have like the Mode 7 type things and scaling, rotation, tiling, sprite type activity and all this. So I'm working on that right well, now. Well, one of the things I was worried about, you going straight to the Zimba 3000, it's like, are you just going to have more problems like we had with this uh -huh. for every console? Nah, and, no. You don't think so? No. No, the, prob the main problem we've had with this is that fucking video pin. That's where 99% of the problems have come from, is that video pin. Because we have to get the sync pulses out of the PPU, and that's the only place to get them. Sure. And that's what's causing all the problems, all the rolling video type issues. It's that sync signal coming from that PPU. Hmm. So that's why the version 2.0 update, I did this major retooling of how all that works, you know, to make it better, to filter the noise sometimes it gets in there. So if I do have some older ones come back, all I have to do is change out the PPU interposer. No, you just have to, what if it's not working Like right? if it's got rolling video. Um, update to 2.0 and see if that fits. If it already has that. Oh, then yeah, you'd yeah. have to change that. Or remove the video transistor. Or move it. Because I think part of the problem was noise getting in on that video pin just because it goes by all these like address and data lines. You know, just that coupling was it enough right to screw yeah. yeah, that was enough to screw it up. I mean, it's just that sensitive. If we didn't have that problem, this this project would have gone a lot smoother. If we had some way to get that sync pulse out of there, and no, you know, someone will say, oh well, why don't you just um, sync to it and then use the PPU clock to time it? Well, you can't because when the PPU is turned off, the video timing is different than when it's turned on. And it's tricky because some games will leave the PPU off long enough that it won't trigger this, the effect of removing one pixel every other frame. That's what it does. It removes one pixel every other frame when the rendering is on. You know, like, why? And it's so static screens look nicer because it, it changes the dot crawl. Oh. is why they did it. Huh. The PAL chips does not do that. Just the NTSC one. And only when it's on. So Battletoads keeps the video off longer than normal. And so it does not remove that pixel every other frame because it's, the video turns on after that occurs. Hmm. So if it did it all the time or none of the time, it would be awesome. I would not have any of these problems at all. But since it does it some of the time, it's a huge fucking pain in the ass. And you don't think you're going to have any kind of problems like this on the other consoles? No. Well, no other console can you extract video like this. Well, and you're not trying to. You're no. just replicating the whole console yes. on the Zimba. Yes. Yeah, the Zimba, it's not a problem because, like you said, I'm replicating everything. So I have full control of everything. I have all of those signals inside so I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, the only problems you'd run into on there would be compatibility problems. But, you know, I've been pretty good at, you know, debugging it. I know, I know there's some already some people talking about it and excited uh -huh. about it. Of course, I've been excited about it for over a year because I've yeah. seen the other version. Yeah, you've seen the board, uh-huh. <laughs> but, yeah, the synthesizer I'm doing is basically going to have all the same hardware as a Zimba 3000 will. It'll have the scalar CPU, which will have that video processor in it. It'll have an SD card, have a microcontroller running it, have another FPGA for, you know, like the game system, or in this case, the synthesizer system. Cool. So it's pretty much the same type of hardware. So I figure once I develop all this crap for this project, which is a simpler project, then when I go to the Zimba 3000, I got this entire thing all done. You know, the whole infrastructure for loading things, running things, you know, doing video, all of that's done now. So that's the idea. 
Great. So having all that stuff done really helps a lot because then I can just drop it in. Making the, you know, people are like, oh, well, making hardware is hard. No, it's not that hard. It's the programming. It's not hard for you. <laughs> yeah, well, it takes a lot. The programming is what takes all the time. You know, I can design the circuit board in, you know, a couple weeks or whatever. But, you know, it's going to take like a year to write the code. You know, that's yeah, how, know that. yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> you know, how long did it take me to make this board? You know, I don't know, a couple weeks. And that was with all the research I did. So, you know, the actual layout, you know, I did that video time lapse and it was like, you know, 12 hours to lay this out. And that was for version two, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That Well, this version, 3.1. This is 3.1. Version two was the green one, wasn't it? Yeah, the, yeah, I think the whites so. were the ones, and then yeah, the yes. and green ones. Yeah, and there's the green ones, and then this one. So yeah, this version, you know, when I laid it out, it took you know like 12 hours to lay it out, and that was like total layout with no routes on the board. You know, that was 100 percent layout from nothing. Well, the parts and board outline to finished product. So making a Zimba 3000 board, you know, take a couple weeks since it's a lot more complicated. That's like what, ten times that thing. Yeah, but, I mean it's not really that hard doing the hardware. I mean you just lay it out and hook everything up. It's all that damn software. Yeah, if we wanted to make a Famicom version of this, we'd almost have to redesign that Famicom board. Yeah. Which is not out of the question, really. Yeah, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. Someone would have to pay me money. Yeah, well, someone will that have would to be like a Kickstarter thing because then you could you. Could justify it it's like well if you come up with this kind of money then we'll do it because we already know we have the customers and whatnot yeah i just don't think it's there i don't either like i said if you want a famicom use a top loading famicom you know av famicom and if you really have to have that fucking microphone put a fucking 3.5 millimeter jack on there <laughs> for the microphone yeah i think i think uh yeah i think voltar sent me a a circuit on how to mod that back in there. I'm yeah. gonna try it it's sometime. It's not that hard. I mean, it's just you know the original. Have you ever taken one of those apart to look at the microphone circuit? It's hilariously terrible. <laughs> it uses a 4069 hex inverter as an audio amplifier in there in the controller. Yeah. Actually, does this have the microphone? I'm guessing it doesn't. Nope, it doesn't. So the clone doesn't even have the microphone. They figured it was useless. Yeah, because uh. Player two has a bigger connector on it. Normally, has one more. No, doesn't. Uh, you know, it's funny. The footprint is there for the six-pin connector. Sure is. Yeah. Yep. Sure enough. That's funny. But yeah, those microphones are pretty. I wonder if any of them really still work anymore. You know that. The little slide volume control thing gets like so dirty and scratchy that it barely works because you know that's just like carbon on the circuit board. You know, there's no pot in there, right. you know, like real pots, just carbon on the circuit board, a little slider. Has DC offset across it, and that's what causes a scratchy pot, usually like a volume pot. If you have any DC across it, it'll go scratchy because it'll like, you know, the water in the air will like plate out a bit. That's what makes a volume control scratchy usually. Hmm. That's why if you ever put a volume control on anything, put a cap on either side of it, the input and output. Hmm. And that should prevent your pot getting scratchy so fast. But, oh, that costs an extra couple cents for that capacitor, so, oh, we'll just leave it out. <laughs> well, I call it, uh, I just watched a video about that today. What? Design for failure or something like that. Oh, yeah? Designed for manufacture? Designed for obsolescence. Oh. It's like they're trying to design it so it does fail. So you go buy Oh, designed one. obsolescence. Mm -hmm. Planned obsolescence. Yeah. There oh. you go. I was looking. Uh, you haven't been here for over a year. Yeah. It was last, like, January when we um, looked at the INL stuff. It was, like, January. January 15 or January 14? 15. Because I, I looked at my videos and I don't think you had been here at all in 15. Really? Mm -hmm. Maybe it was December of it might 14. Have been. It's been almost exactly a year. I 
like we ought to do these videos more often just because a lot of my subscribers might even not even know that you have a channel uh -huh. and that gives them a chance to click over and see your channel too PCB drills or um, router like router bits. They're more like router bits. Yep. Those are what I tried for the HDMI hole. Uh, yeah, this is what the PCB drills come in too. They come in a thing just like that. Voltar is working on getting bits that he likes for doing that. Problem with the PCB drill bits is they're extremely brittle. So any side loading at all, they'll snap right off. That's the problem I had, was trying to keep them straight. Try to use a drum, don't even bother, they just break. Well, I, was, I had to put my drum on the lowest RPM. Oh, Otherwise uh, it was just melting plastic. Oh. It wasn't even cutting it, it was just melting through it. Well these are probably for FR4 or similar. These are, these are designed really for a side load since it's a routing bit. He was, he's, I mean, He's close, I think. I don't know that he's actually got the bit picked out, but oh, he yeah. does have the templates done. And he just, I think he just sent them to me today because I reminded him. He's like, man, I knew I forgot something because I wanted him to be here for you to look at. Oh, uh huh. I had, uh, of course, the last bit I did about the front loader caps. Uh huh. Come to find out, Console 5, you ever heard of that guy? No. He sells cap kits. Okay. He might sell some mods, so I think I, I think I should contact him about selling that composite mod. Mm -hmm. Maybe he did buy some, I don't remember. But anyway, he does have a page of the diagram of that RF module and what cap goes where. Okay. I missed a couple. Oh yeah? Yeah, there was one that was way... Off to the side. Way, way off, uh, diagonal from the main cap. Mm. They're still accessible by bending up that shield. The, the top part that's actually between the motherboard and the RF module. I don't know how. But it's out, in, it's out into the RF circuitry. Uh-huh. So. I'm not sure how much you really need to replace those caps anyway to be no, honest. No, I, I agree. It's the main one and uh -huh. the two 100s. Oh, really? Because I've seen all three of those. Go. Oh, yeah. Well, there was a picture of it in the, in the video. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I think I did see but, that. Usually, two of those caps are within reach, or they have to be removed anyway to get to the 100. Uh huh. So might as well just do them all. Yeah. But uh, maybe you can shed some light. I had a lot of people say, "Well, you need to replace a one with a one instead of a one with a 10." Well, it depends on what it is. That's exactly what I said, and I said it's the it's the audio circuit coming from the from the main. If board, it's an audio coupling and it cap to these two caps. Uh huh. All the 10 would probably be fine there. Yeah. Because I'm thinking it's just probably just it's audio. It's a it's a audio coupling capacitor. So if anything, yeah. that the bigger cap will give you more bass. Yeah. The well. If if it's part of the filter circuitry. No, no bigger caps give you more bass anyway. Because I think so. Well, yeah, because it's passing AC, right? Well, and and the the thing that my argument was is well, I've had the same modules have different size mm -hmm. caps. Well, yeah, because they're made by Mitsumi and Alps. Alps, yeah. So, I don't know how many revs that went through. Probably quite a few. We've found... Like three or four or five, I think. I saw the pictures. I want to say at least four. Because I think Console 5 has three. Uh-huh. And I had one that was not in there. No, he has four and I have five. Okay. Something like that. But... Yeah, the RF circuitry cap, I was just like, it's far enough away from all the heat... It really shouldn't matter. But see, I'm planning on selling a cap kit to people mm -hmm. who want to yeah, cap yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. And I thought, well, you know, sometime you have to pull one of those one or tens out of the way anyway to get to the hundred. So might as well put in a couple tens in there. And I bought, like, thousands of Nishikons from Mauser just for that purpose. Uh-huh. Well, that's good that you got them from Mauser and not eBay. Oh, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, well, wasn't it, it work. Uh, we only buy caps from DigiKey or Mauser. We have to. I mean, otherwise you get screwed. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the shitty caps. You know, we've had it happen on our products at work where we get shitty caps and they leak or go open circuit. Like on this one control we have, the caps go like open circuit. They dry out or whatever because they're not the right cap. And then the power supply explodes. Because they're knockoffs. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That sucked. So every time we get one of those back for repair, we 
we replace those caps no matter what, even if they look good. But you put it on that meter and they're crap. You know, they're like lost half their capacitance. Hmm. They don't bulge or anything. They just kind of like go open circuit. You know, it's kind of a fad where you just replace all the caps no matter what. <laughs> and I'm just like, why? Well, like the NES motherboard, it's uh -huh. got Rubicons on it. Those, mother those motherfuckers are, n are never bad. Yeah. You see right here? Mm -hmm. Well, they're little. Those little caps usually don't go and bad. And I was like, why, why bother, you know? I mean, they usually don't go bad. They're too small. It's usually the big filter caps that go bad because they handle all that ripple current. Not to mention they're enclosed and yeah. heated. Yeah, that's not, that's, <laughs> that's like, that's like the worst design ever right there. Yeah. 